I think this is a Daily Motor record for number of seats in one video. Maybe even one frame here. I think we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think that's probably enough for uh, us two, uh, two people, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. We got Chris here from the Topher, and we've put on our mom jeans and we are comparing the brand new 2020 Chrysler Pacifica to my 2006 Craigslist special, the $750 town and country. So I think, uh, I think we may have converted Chris a bit to be a minivan follower, at least to some degree. And I've always maintained that the town and country is the best used vehicle you can buy. And I'm gonna try to convince you guys of that throughout this video, but we're also going to take a look at how things have progressed over 15 years of Chrysler minivan development and production. So without much further ado, let's hop in the new car. Chris will take a little spin in the old 250,000 miler and we'll go for a little test drive. I'm excited because I just put 2,500 miles on this and uh, it'll be cool to compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just remember the whole time you're driving, you could get 50 of these for this one. So, you know, keep that in mind. How, how would your trip have differed had you had a different one parked about every 50 miles or so you for run you? run out of gas, just get into the next one. Exactly, yeah. yep. You just have enough Facebook Marketplace connections along the way that you're just constantly, you know. It gets dirty, buy another one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's go take a little test drive. Uh, don't feel pressured to push it too hard or anything. I, I'm pretty sure this old gal will probably not be able to keep up with this one. So, uh, you know, just take your time. And, take it easy. We'll yeah. just cruise. Yep, just cruise mom style, soccer mom style. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right, so I got to say I absolutely love this blue color. I wish they made colors as funky. They did have a very nice orange around this time, 2006 range of the town and country, but nothing as cool looking as this metallic blue. Oh, we don't have the key. Let's go, uh, let's go politely ask Chris for that one. Please, sir, may I have a key? <laughs> a little bit of fuzz kill there, sorry about that. <laughs> you good. Yep. This actually gives me an opportunity to demonstrate one of the features of the 2020 Pacifica. You've got remote start for those extra cold or extra warm mornings. And the car's sitting out in the driveway or in your hopefully open garage. Very easy to start up the vehicle. And you can see air conditioning's already blowing. Just go ahead and press that there and get everything started up. We're gonna turn down the fan so you can hear a little bit better. Turn down the temps, sync those up. Take one last look at this key here. Really nice design, feels good. Comes with this nice little uh, leather key ring holder thing here, but you got your power lift gate, power doors with uh, buttons on the on the remote here, and then your remote start and lock and unlock. It's just looking around the cabin. It's just such a nice place to be. Tons of storage. Tons of places to put all your gadgets and gizmos and snacks. Everything's got a, a nice rubbery bottom to it. Things don't rattle around or clump. Even in here, rubbery and smooth. The little hidden pocket right there. Now we've actually got a full review of this Chrysler Pacifica. So if you wanna see more of the details on kind of how everything works and all the little gizmos and gadgets inside here, check the link in the description. We'll have that video posted. But let's just get on the road a little bit and compare what you get for what I believe is about $50,000. Do we have a window sticker? Chrysler Pacifica Limited, 49,975. So just barely coming in there under the $50,000 mark. So we've got rotary shifter here. I love this little rotary shifter. It's so easy to use. It's out of the way. That's what they've really done so well with the town and country Pacifica sort of vehicle is just make it an unobtrusive, easy to drive ride. You're supposed to be able to get in this car and go about your day-to-day -day business and not have to worry about the driving aspect of having a car. I mean, you just get in and, and you go. You've got seat memory settings for two different drivers. 
Now this is rocking Chrysler's V6 Pentastar motor. Very stout, very strong. Pulls away super easy. It's actually got a nine speed transmission, if I'm remembering correctly. And all the shifts are smooth. Gosh, I haven't, I've, I drove this about a week and a half ago and then I've spent, I've actually done multiple road trips in Pacificas as well. And it's just immediate familiarity. I'm comfortable right away. You got tilt telescoping steering wheel. You get just comfortable. I like those blue gauges. That blue color might bother me a little bit at night, but I do know you can dim them down pretty significantly, so that's nice. I like having a digital speed readout. That's a must for me here in 2020. Let's see what sort of fuel economy Chris has been getting on his long trip. Average 26 miles to the gallon. Pretty good for all this rolling living room of space here. You've got plenty of power ports. I see there's a USB-A down there, one right here plugged in as well as a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack. You've got a panoramic sunroof, which I believe is new for 2020. That's pretty cool. I'll open it up here, show you guys. So as you can see, it goes way, way back and there's even a manually openable portion for the third row seat. So even the kids way back there can open a little bit of their sunroof and see out to the stars. So this engine really rings out. It's not quite as torquey as I would kind of expect and, and prefer from a vehicle of this size. You kind of like a little bit more low-end grunt so you don't have to ring it out as much, but other than the Honda Odyssey, it's kind of a power leader in the minivan class. Chrysler's Uconnect infotainment system really is excellent. I love just about everything with it. One of the best on the market. The response times are good, the functions are good. What else is good? Um, the intuitiveness, intuition, I suppose. Just kind of how everything's laid out and makes sense. I like how you still have manual adjustable climate control buttons and knobs here, even though you can also access it in the touch screen. And let's get these cars up on the highway. See how the ultimate family cruiser cruises. This nine speed transmission, like I said, it kind of has to kick down a few gears and spin up a bit to get power. But once it does, nice and easy. And the 2020 Pacifica Limited has all sorts of safety aids, driving helpers and everything, and part of that is adaptive cruise control. And Chrysler does it a really nice way. You can either use normal cruise control right here with this button, just press that and you got normal cruise, or you press this button, you got adaptive cruise control, works the same way, you can set, adjust your following distance here. And then you've also got a, a moderate active lane keeping assist, so you can press that button there and then the car will sort of just nudge you back into the lane if you're coming out. So you can see right now it's sort of doing some steering for me, but if I let go, it, it, uh, it'll try. It's actually doing a pretty decent job here. So if you're yelling at your kids or changing the radio station, it's nice to have on, but it does yell at you and it will depart the lane. It's not a full semi-autonomous driving like in a Volvo or a Tesla or some of those new cars. So it can be a little frustrating to have that on if you're really engaged in your driving, so a lot of people just choose to turn it off. Other than that, it's so quiet here. I mean, you've got virtually no wind noise. I can hear a little bit of tire noise on this new pavement here. No engine noise. You can just cruise along for hundreds and hundreds of miles. You've got a very upright seating position, so it's kind of like you're sitting in a lounge chair. You've got this nice armrest that you can actually set to different levels, which is super cool. <sighs> yeah, it's the cruiser, guys. It's the ultimate road tripper. Now, I should talk a little bit about why I think Chrysler's minivans are the ultimate used car buy, especially if you are a little familiar with do-it-yourself work and you can follow YouTube tutorial and maybe do some basic repairs and maintenance on your own. Having all this space 
along with the stow and go seating, which we'll demonstrate later on, just allows you to have so much versatility for any sort of activity. If you need to carry a lot of people, you put all the seats up and you can fit seven perfectly comfortable, seven full-size adults, really. If you want to, say, put a bicycle in the back, then you fold some seats down, there you go, you got room for a bike. If you need to move a, a full sectional couch, which I have done with my minivan, you fold all the seats down, kind of put things in there just right, and bada bing, bada boom, you can carry a couch, you can carry a mattress, you can carry a dresser. It's amazing what you can put in there. And the reason why the minivan beats something like a truck is because everything's dry and secure. So when I go mountain biking and I've got my tarp down in the back of the minivan and throw the bike in back there, I can drive, say, to the grocery store afterward or anywhere else, and I know that my bike is locked up, it's secure, it's not going to get rained on or snowed on or whatever uh, elements are out there, it's not going to get stolen. In a truck, that's not something I'd have, and I also wouldn't be able to carry as many people, and I'd probably get worse fuel economy. This brand new Pacifica is getting 26 miles to the gallon easy. My minivan gets, if I'm on the highway, kind of mid-20s, just driving around town, low 20s, probably about 20 miles to the gallon. Really not too bad. The other thing is the chassis on this new Pacifica is so good. You can really throw it around here. Look at that, 55 miles per hour on this off-ramp. Just taking it. Barely any protests from the tires. Do you have blind spot monitoring on the 2020 Pacifica? That is something that you do not see on the old town and country. Another thing that you have on the 2020 model is ventilated seats. 2006 does have heated seats, but no ventilation on those ones. You also have a heated steering wheel on the 2020 model, so that's pretty cool. What else do you have in controls? You've got headrest fold, so you can actually adjust the third row, or drop the third row headrests there give yourself a little bit more visibility. Passengers got heated and cooled seats as well. We've got automatic headlights in 2020. Electronic parking brake. Still have steering wheel audio controls on the back right and left of the steering wheel, just like in the original, or not original, but back in the 2006. The new model does have a lot more storage, which is nice to see. I mean, there's so many compartments here. There's room for stuff. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six different storage compartments just in this little center area. Then you got doors, you've got the glove box, you've got the rear sections. It's really tough to even come up with complaints for this vehicle. The new models, 2021, you're coming out with all-wheel drive for the Pacifica, as well as the continued plug-in hybrid model. So there are really even fewer reasons not to buy a Chrysler Pacifica the only thing is, I'm not a huge fan of the looks of the redesign. I'll have to see one in person, but I've always liked the styling of this model. So the facelift kind of looks a little awkward to me, but a lot of people do like it. So, and apparently the design team thought it was good. So if you're looking for a family vehicle here in 2020, it's really hard to beat the good old Chrysler Pacifica. But let's come back into the parking lot here park this next to the 2006 and compare some of their features while stationary. You like that AC clutch rattle? <laughs> Must have, it's the Chrysler's, old Chrysler's did like a one back. Oh yeah. So if you turn too far, it's like in accessory mode still. Thoughts and impressions? <laughs> Actually, I'm impressed. It feels, feels pretty good. Yeah. For 250,000 miles. 750 bucks. Those uh, winter tires are a little loud, eh? That's okay. <laughs> I mean, but this is a great winter vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's just so nice to have a vehicle that you don't have to like pamper and really care about little things happening. Everything seems to work in there pretty well. Well, you that you really raise an excellent point because that's been my favorite part of owning this car. I mean, a perfect anecdote was I was on the phone one point and I was backing out of somebody's driveway and bumped into a tree. And I didn't even like get out to make sure everything was okay. I was like, oh, okay. Check if the tree was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, I was like, well, that happened. I pulled forward and moved around and continued backing out. I mean, owning a vehicle that you're really not worried about the condition in is a freeing experience. It's hugely freeing. Yep. It just has so much versatility. It really does. So on that note, 
Let's go and take a look at, I'm actually gonna grab the key out of this one. Let's talk about some of its static features. As you mentioned, this has 250,000 miles and just about everything works. The only thing that doesn't, I wanna say, is parking brake and that's related to the actual hardware and the drum there. Um, I think that's about it. Are the doors all power? They and are. The seats are power operated, everything works there. So this, this is actually, even though the back of the car says limited, which would have been top in 2006, this is a touring trim, so the second highest model. The only things you're missing out on are the upgraded Alpine audio system, which would have gotten you eight speakers and a subwoofer, um, as well as some fog lights, a little extra chrome on the car. But this is the Walter P. Chrysler Signature Series touring trim. So you do have power doors on both sides. They both still work, as well as a power lift gate. And that's a lot of similarities behind the driver's seats. Yep. Well, they do have the formula down. You really start to see that here. So as you guys can see, I have all the seats in their stowed position. And this is how I typically use this vehicle. It's, uh, it's kind of a utility vehicle for me. As I, as I was saying when we were driving along, I use it for mountain biking. I use it for moving a lot, especially during the summer. We've been doing a ton of moving. Um, and then when I need to carry people, I just walk back here. I go like that. And there's some seats if I need to carry an extra person. Oh, this one's a little jammed. There we go. Yep, I'll do that. And there we go, you can see it's filthy. That's what happens when you loan your car out to people is they don't clean it up. <laughs> but then, you do have limo seating, yep. Nothing has this much leg room. Nope. Not even a Maybach. Exactly, you have tons of room. And when you put this headrest up, they're really not the most uncomfortable seats in the world. You've got good amount of headroom, Chris modeling for us. You've got cup holders. You've got a little storage compartment there, which I think I keep a bungee cord in. You do. Yep, just in case. We've got two more cup holders over here. So those are just about the easiest seats to fold up and fold down. You also, even back in 2006, have third row or second and third row rear climate control. So three levels there and temperature that the rear seat passengers can adjust. And you've got vents here and here, as well as dome lights and little coat hanger hooks. So quite a lot of features, even back in 2006 on not the highest trim. And you can see we do have our DVD player with brightness adjustments and play and pause right on the side. I don't think this screen is that much bigger than my phone screen. So that's something to consider here in 2020. The new 2020 Pacifica does up that a little bit, which I'll show you here in a minute. But you've got a power port, seat belts, everything you really need to be a family vehicle. So let's demonstrate real quick the operation of the stow and go seats for the second row, which really started in 2005 with the town and country and really put it on the map. So you do have to manually put the seat a little bit forward back in the 2006 model. And that allows you to move your stuff out of the way, pull this up, exposing the stowed seat, pull it back that down, pull this here, you can hear the leather sticking to itself since it's been so long, and all of a sudden, you've got a seat, plenty of headroom, you've got two armrests, which are very nice. Now these seats have a little bit less cushion than competitor seats because they need to be a little bit more compact in order to fold into the floor, but it just goes to show you how much utility you get for a sub $1,000 vehicle. And I should say that mine was a little bit of a steal because it actually had the glass on the back lift gate broken when I purchased it. So you can actually, you can fold this manually or with the key, fold it manually here. So this glass was completely broken when I bought it. But the other great boon to buying a town and country or a Grand Caravan used is that they're everywhere in junkyards, used car markets, parts are super cheap and super readily available. So I actually sourced the same model year, same color, entire rear hatch for $65 at a junkyard. So I went out and I purchased the hatch, purchased the car, and that's why it says limited when it's actually a touring because this was the rear hatch for a limited model. But it was a super easy replacement to do. That's the other nice thing about American cars versus Japanese or German or anyone else. Fixing them is so gosh darn easy. All these parts just kind of 
pull apart like Legos. You can kind of just put your hand in and yank them out. <laughs> they all just kind of clip in and out of place. And then it was, let's see, um, it was bolt, 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 and one bolt here, and that was it. The whole thing was off. That's awesome. When I replaced it, I didn't really have to do, I think there was a little bit of just sort of making sure the screws were all in exactly the right place, but then it just kind of latched itself right back down. The power element worked. The guy I was doing it with joked that if it were a Mercedes, this whole power element would have been like a 10 hour job to sort of tear apart and get into, but no, it was literally just this star bolt. And that was it, this thing just came loose. That's so, easy. yep, it was, it was amazing. So, I have had to do some repairs. I replaced the um, rear windshield wiper motor with a junkyard motor. That was super easy to do. I replaced the suction for the cruise control junkyard part. Okay. Um, that, was, that was super easy. I think I've done a few fuses um, and put a new ground strap on the car. So. If you're gonna buy one of these, you definitely wanna be able to follow some YouTube tutorials. You wanna be able to do a little bit of work on your own, but you don't have any weird like hex bolts like you would with a Volkswagen or something like that, or any weird parts. I mean, everything, if you have just your standard handyman toolkit and a little bit of technical acumen, you can go out and pretty much purchase any part you need for these cars. So that is really, really great. So you can see these doors power themselves closed. This one does like to pop open sometimes. Let's see if it does it here. Nope. Close just fine. Now there are two engine options for this generation town and country. You could get the 3.3 liter V6 or the 3.8. This one is the 3.8. The top two trims got 3.8. I have no idea about horsepower figures because they don't matter. Easy enough, right? Fantastic. Comparing the two keys here, you can see they both serve pretty similar functions. Although this one's a bit wore out, you do have your power lift gate, Two power doors, lock and unlock. This one, power lift gate, two power doors. The only difference is you do have your remote start. So let's power open Pacifica here real quick. And like I said, check out the link in the description for a full kind of breakdown on all the features that the Pacifica has. But operation of the seats is even easier here in 2020 because you've got buttons. Give a little press to the stow button and look at that, everything is done for you. Now I will say if this were a race, I think the 2006 model would win, but it really doesn't get much easier than that, does it? And you've even got a little nifty right, left, or both button. So if you, oh, and then it actually got confused. I switched over to the both button and now the seats are going back and forth independent of each other. <laughs> a little bit of uh, electrical silliness there. Oh, there we go. There we go, now it's coming. Okay, so you can see here again, even the 2020 model, perfectly nice flat load floor, big opening. And then for the second row stow and go seats, they've gotten even easier as well because you don't need to manually adjust the driver's seat. You can simply press this button and the seat moves out of the way just as much as you need in order to manually stow the second row. Still no power for these, but that's quite all right because it's simple. Press that. Open this up, even easier to do in this model, less folding, pull that, and it sort of hinges itself in, pull that out, and away you go, you're stowed. Very simple to do. Another thing I love doing with my town and country, and a reason that Chris was interested in driving this Pacifica, is it's a perfect camping vehicle. You've got all this space, you can actually fit a full-size mattress, whether it be an air mattress or a real mattress, fits down in there flat, with some room for your, your bags and other things. And you've got the cup holders and compartments and everything. With this 2020 model, you've got the panoramic sunroof you can look out. It's really an excellent camping vehicle, even for two people. In the back seats here, for $50,000, don't think you're getting all the same things as the $1,000 2006 model. You do have two high definition, large screens back here that are touchscreen. They provide some really awesome features outside of just watching videos. Check out our full review for all the different games you can play. The two screens actually communicate with each other. Chris is gonna give us a little power here. Interesting that the remote key works from all the way back here. Nice to see. <laughs> there you go. These, these screens do take a little while to turn on, so if your kids are a little angsty, then, uh, then you might get some complaints with them. But you do have your rear climate control in this one. 
So that's nice to see. See how nice and big the screen is. Other than that, that's about it for back here. Oh, no it's not. I forgot to mention, in the 2020 Pacifica, you do get a vacuum cleaner as well that has a surprising amount of suction. And it's actually not gonna work when the car's just in accessory mode, but you can vacuum things up super easy. In fact, I'll show you here real quick. Let's just throw the car on. And then, you know, see, you see Chris left this thing trashed, and if you don't want to deal with that, you just turn this on. Plenty of suction. You vacuum up the two little bits of junk that he left on the carpet. And then, that's somebody else's problem to clean up. Super nice to see something that you're not getting on the 2006 model. Other than that, that's about it for rear seat features. I should say one last thing I forgot to mention with the 2006. This center console can actually be removed. So should you want to put a cooler or bags or something like that in the middle, then you can take that out. Wow. Let's do a little swapping back. We'll get you back into the 20, the, the, the troves of the 21st century here with your cooled seats and, uh, and all, all your, your basic functionality. Though. Oh yeah, I the mean. The car stuff is the same. A little bit of a <laughs> rough start there. The battery is a little old on this car and I have not done much to, I don't know, I just try to put as little money into this car as possible. So hey, if the battery's still working, let's go with it. So taking an initial look around here, some of the features I wanna point out, you do have dual zone climate control, technically three zone when you count the rear climate as well, but you can adjust driver and passenger climate separately, so that's nice to see. You did actually have DVD navigation back in 2006. Now it doesn't work for me because I don't have the disc. You needed a DVD to go into here and actually power the navigation. Those things are like two or three hundred dollars now, so no way I'm gonna pay for that to have old navigation on this little tiny screen, but you do have AM FM radio, six disc CD player changer on top of this CD changer as well and an auxiliary port. So you, it's just these uh, RCA inputs, but what you do is you get yourself one of these little things, and then you've got 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input. So nice little usable center display there. You've got heated two-stage seats for both the driver and passenger. A little bit less storage in the 2000 six model here you've got your cup holders they work decently adjust to your big gulp there two power points here you've got a glove box a little bit of storage and then this kind of two-stage thing old cell phone holder that doesn't really hold modern style phones a little tray there and then a really deep well in here so that's nice to see and like i said you can actually reach in and unhinge this and take the whole thing out but you also have a power point there so that's nice to see no storage in the rear, but you do have another power point. So you look at four different 12 volt outlets just in the front here. Power operated sunroof, we're actually gonna close that. Keep a little cooler in here. Let's get on the road. Now it is beeping at me because my parking brake is not operational in this car and the pedal actually sags down a bit. So you can see if I pull it up with my foot, light goes away. Like we go, the parking brake light comes back on. So you have telescoping, or sorry, tilting steering wheel here, but no telescoping. However, you do have adjustable pedals. So those can go in and out. So it kind of makes up for not having telescopic steering wheel. Now, even though there's not as much outright power from the 3.8 liter engine, I do like the way that the four speed transmission kind of just see, like kind of rushes forward with torque in this car in a way that the new Pacifica doesn't really. Not really too many rattles. The steering does pull a little bit to the right, but I am probably not gonna pay for an alignment for this car unless it were to get really bad. I mostly just drive it locally, although I have taken it on a few road trips and I have family members that take it a few hours away and use it for moving, so 
it does get quite a bit of use. As you can see, there are 248,533 miles on it. Chugging along strong. My transmission shifts immediately. There's no hesitancy to it. They, I know transmissions can be a weak point for these cars, but they say as long as when you put it into drive, the car goes into drive quickly, then you should be in pretty good shape. So am I really gonna sit here and expect any of you to believe that a 2006 Town & Country is better than a 2020 Pacifica? Absolutely not. I mean, the new Pacifica is an immensely comfortable, nice, easy to drive, uh, well-priced, just ever, it's one of the best cars that's on the market. This thing has plenty of issues. It it's, doesn't look as good in most people's eyes. I actually kind of like the looks of it, but to most people it looks dumpy and dorky and I mean, the, the steering is vague and, and it's louder, but you gotta consider if you're buying a second vehicle or maybe your first car or you just need something basic and, and maximized on practicality and, you know, maybe gonna have a little bit more questionable reliability, but nothing that you're not gonna be able to get fixed at any mechanic place around the world or possibly even on your own. Parts are gonna be cheap and available. You, it's really hard to beat the old Chrysler town and country. And obviously the Dodge Caravan is an option as well, but I just kind of like the styling of the town and country a little bit better. Town and country has a little bit extra elements around the headlights. I think it looks a little bit cooler, a little bit more regal. The interiors are a little bit nicer on the Chryslers as well. But a Dodge Caravan will do just fine. Same internals and really most of the same features. I actually kind of like the gauge cluster in the 2006. I like kind of the, the white with the green. It's a bit nostalgic for me. Old Ram trucks kind of had a similar gauge cluster, but I also just think it looks good. It's easy to use. No big surprises. So now that we're up to highway speed here, the wind noise is actually pretty minimal as well. You do notice a lot of tire noise, and that's because I, like a savage, run winter tires on this car all year round. And I know, I know, it's incredibly irresponsible, but you gotta remember, I don't drive this car very often. And my other vehicle is a 2001 Porsche Boxster. So that gets parked in the winter, and this is my primary winter personal vehicle. So rather than spending the money to swap between two different sets of tires, I found these wheels and tires already mounted for $100 the winter tires had a good amount of tread left and I just purchased them and I ran them. So I've been running them like this for about two seasons. All of the top level silica grippy stuff has wore off so they're pretty much just kind of like muddy type tires now and you know what they get the job done. Standard cruise control in the old TNC. Set it and it works. <laughs> Up here you've got a little multi-function display. It shows you your compass and outside air temperature. And it also displays fuel economy for that drive. Distance to empty, very accurate. An odometer. Uh, elapsed time since you started the car. Or nothing. <laughs> On both vehicles you have three different garage door opening settings. So those are nice to use. And your power door buttons as well. Not pushing it quite as hard around this <laughs> off ramp as I was with the new Pacifica. Who knows how much life these suspension components have. That is the most costly repair I've had to do on this car. I actually went over a huge pothole once in an apartment complex and it completely broke the left front strut in half. I should have a photo of it here. So we just drove the car home and it was just being supported by the spring independently. And that was pretty crazy. So I did have to just get a quick strut, but it was again, so easy to do. It was three bolts on the top, three bolts on the bottom. And within an hour or so in my driveway, just using the jack that's included with the vehicle, all of a sudden had a new strut put in there. And I think it was about $100 and I was buying it like last minute from Napa sort of thing.
You can hear it does make a good amount of noise from the air conditioner clutch, but if I turn that off, it goes away. So at the end of the day, both of these cars are awesome for what you need them for. If you're someone who wants a new vehicle and you want all the bells and whistles and perfect reliability and everything, brand new Chrysler Pacifica, man. I cannot recommend it enough if that's, if you need the space and you carry a lot of people or anything. There's one right there. But hey, if you need a cheap vehicle, you need a, a reliable-ish, <laughs> but like a very easy to own vehicle. I mean, insurance costs are low, repair costs are low. Everything's accessible. You can find them all over the place, different features. I highly, highly recommend picking up either a touring or a limited 2005 to 2007 Chrysler Town & Country. She's my favorite. All right. That is one thing that the 2020 model has that the 2006 does not, is in the new one, these back windows will roll down. So that's pretty cool to see. How was your time traveling? It's great. <laughs> Are there any features that are must-haves on the new one for you? I know the cooled seats really come in handy on a day like today. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, I didn't really use the heated cooled seats. Well, I didn't use the heated seats, obviously, it's cool. <laughs> summer, but I didn't use the cooled seats at all. The air conditioning cooled the car off very quickly. Yeah. You know, I think the, I'd be curious about the premium sound system. Mm -hmm. This sound system is okay, it's passable, it's great, it's a little bass heavy, Yep. but it, it's nice. Um, Otherwise, I don't know. I, this is like my first experience with these, with these vans too. Yeah. And I just, I just love the usability of them. It's pretty awesome. So. I really think that's what it comes down to of this sort of car being the ultimate used vehicle is if, if you're someone who's, it's your first car or it's your only car or even if it's a second car, to be able to pick one up so cheap and have parts be so readily available and so easy to fix, you can do so much with one vehicle there's really nothing else out there other than maybe like a full cargo van that can do as much. So if you're someone who needs a lot of practicality and family movability and you want the, the features and the good looks and, and the practicality and reliability of a new car, it's really hard to beat the 2020 Chrysler Pacifica. But if you need something that's just gonna get you from A to B and pr pretty much be the most maximized use of your dollar available, it's tough to beat the old mid 2000s Chrysler Town and Country or Dodge Caravan. But even if you want to go out and get an Odyssey from Honda or a Toyota Sienna, the only difference is those stow and go seats can make a huge difference. And if, a, if, if you want to sort of experience, oh, well, you can just take the seats out or something like that, go ahead, get yourself a big cardboard moving box, fill it up with about 50 pounds worth of rocks, and just set it in your garage or basement or wherever you store your vehicle and get two of those because that's what you'd have to deal with anytime you need to take the seats out, leave them around. You'll be amazed how much easier it is to be able to just slap the seats down and be good to go. Yeah, that's a big selling point. It really is. Yeah. I think really the only other thing I would want from this would be impossible. It'd be nice to be able to take it over landing. Yeah. You know, a little bit more ground clearance, four wheel drive, but it's not, <laughs> not going to happen. It needs the Mercedes treatment. However, 2021 Pacifica does have all wheel drive. So you're one step there. You could do some some uh, raising on the springs, and you might right. be in business. All right, put yeah. the uh, the handicap springs on, but without mm -hmm. the skirts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So, anyway, we know this video was a little bit silly, but I hope you guys enjoyed kind of seeing both of these vehicles a little bit out of their element, just kind of hearing an ownership perspective. Thanks a lot to Chris from the Topher. I know he uh, he took this Pacific on a little bit of a back road blast and some road fun. trip impressions. It's it's surprisingly capable. Yeah. It really is. It does it all. It really does. So if you enjoyed the video, check out our full review of the 2020 Pacifica. We also did a sound system test of this mid-level system. I will tell you the Harman Kardon that can be optioned on this assist, uh, car is much better. But if you want to see what that one kind of sounds like, check out the link in the description. And someday we'll get the old town and country out for its own review sometime when we've got a slow week of press vehicles in or something like that yeah, so I'd, I'd like to review this too. yeah yeah this is definitely fun so anyway hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next one i'm charlie from daily motor drive on